Hello, my name is Melvin Wei. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I have many plant growing series. This is the first episode of growing avocado trees from seeds. I know it's plural. That's just the way I name my plant growing series. But it's actually just a singular example because these pits are so big. If a plant has small seeds and I have an uncertain chance of success, then I'll plant multiple of them. But from experience, I know that this is going to be huge. So it's a big ripe avocado. This pole that we're facing with the sort of uh, yellowish exposed region that doesn't have that chestnut colored skin, that's where it's going to crack open and send out a root from. So the first step is to wipe away this excess avocado fruit flesh that's very greasy. And that's not enough because I can still feel that this is all greasy and covered in the fat of the avocado fruit. So what that'll do is it will repel water and prevent moisture and water from soaking into that pole and getting in there and causing it to expand and crack open. So the next step is I washed it with a soapy sponge and rinsed thoroughly. And I discovered there was actually a small crack in there and hence I don't want the prospect of soap getting in there. So I did a lot of rinsing and this step is up to you as to whether you want to peel away the so-called skin of this seed or not. You can see a little crack there already. I peeled away just the little bit that I could. I didn't go through all the trouble of trying to get the whole thing uh, naked. So I made a custom planter using stacks off plastic waste baskets with holes that I drilled in there. I'm just showing you the steps in quick succession. I'm not going to um, show the entire process and um, but you can see what's going on basically get rid of the sticker and then drill some holes uh, small holes for the inner waste basket I don't want the holes in the inner waste basket to be too large because then all of the growing medium that I'm planning to use which I'll show you later would just leak out into this outer container which has two functions it's a overflow catch tray and it also provides structural support. These are soft waste baskets and I'm gonna put a lot of weight of growing medium in there. So I wasn't sure that just one would be enough. So in this series of uh, clips, I'm obtaining filtered clay soil from the hills in my neighborhood. I live in San Diego, California, and this is very typical of the soil. It's sort of uh, brownish red. It's very fine when dry, so this was actually done uh, three days after it rained a little bit which is just perfect it didn't generate any dust and I made a 75 percent sand 25 percent clay soil mixture for my plants this is very fine of a clay soil mixture because it's been filtered it's typically full of rocks and little pebbles out there which I don't need it's true that that stuff could provide for a lot of extra spacing and drainage but I feel that it's way too coarse I think sand is good enough. Of course I could have used something like perlite and other kinds of spacers, whether they're synthetic or not, but I sort of forgot about those options, so I'm going with sand, which is really, really heavy. And a container that's full like this will kind of tend to exhaust your back if you pick it up to uh, move it around too many times. So one of the many reasons I don't grow my plants in rotting organic matter anymore, uh, which is what most people actually grow their plants in, is because if you look at these examples of some corporate plants that have been around in these concrete planters for a few years, everything just falls down. Um, there's no structure in there, so when the plant gets too heavy, it tends to shift around. It can't grow straight. Um, I water the sand soil mixture in this planter, which I didn't show you until it was saturated. I left it out on my balcony, poured the runoff, and uh, let it sit exposed to air for, I don't know, maybe two days, and then I did this. So it's sort of like wet beach sand. It's got clay in it, but it more or less has the consistency of beach sand because it's 75% sand. I've tried 50-50 uh, mixtures, and that just congeals together like a mud sun-dried brick. So I planted the avocado pit with the pole that I mentioned earlier facing down. Um, 
directly down perpendicular to the ground as best as I could. And on day 37, a chute came out and hit the plastic wrap within hours. So that happened very suddenly. And the purpose of the plastic wrap, of course, is to preserve the moisture so the top doesn't dry out. And the indoor temperatures have been steady, around 72 Fahrenheit, 22 Celsius. And the great advantage of this method is by keeping this indoors, the entire container is that temperature even at nighttime, whereas outside it would be very cold at night. So it's day 39, and as you can see, there's been some progress. The chute is sticking up uh, above where the plastic wrap was. So I believe that doing this indoors um, when it doesn't need any sunlight is one of the keys to getting fast, consistent germination. It's day 49. I move my seedling out onto the balcony for sunlight. It's cold outside at night. It's still uh, February. So basically, the temperatures were typically around the, maybe the high 40s in Fahrenheit, uh, maybe the low or mid 50s on many days. So that severely inhibits the growth and the progress of a plant. But at the same time, I wanted this to get some sunlight and get acclimated to real world conditions. So it's day 57. It's still all stem and no leaf development. This thing is shooting up like nothing I've ever seen. It's very tall, um, many inches. I haven't had an avocado seedling develop like this. Maybe it's because my conditions are different. Maybe it's supposed to be all stem and no leaf in the beginning. And I've seen really good results with chemical fertilization, miracle Grow in 2019 with all my other plants and my plant series. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. I know the seed itself of an avocado is huge and it contains a lot of reserves that a plant can use to develop in the beginning. Hence why the seedling is so giant already. It's day 64. And there's more stem elongation. It's many, many more inches taller than it was just two or three weeks ago. And you can see the color of the miracle Grow down there is still staying in the sand. So we're starting to get some leaf development. And like I was saying earlier, I've seen really good results. I've heard, I've read that avocados are nitrogen hogs. They use nitrogen like crazy. And this is a very a relatively poor growing medium. It's 75% sand, which provides for great aeration. And it's day 71. Leaf development pace has been glacial, but it's coming along. And there are these little vestigial uh, leaf wannabe things kind of hanging around on the sides. Um, that happens with avocado stems, um, developing seedlings, and uh, they don't really go anywhere. So my thumb and index finger span is about 8 inches, 20 centimeters. So I'd estimate this to be about 11 inches tall, 28 centimeters. So that's quite amazing in terms of plant height uh, without even having um, noticeable like leaf development. So I'm fertilizing a little bit more. I don't have to do this every week. I could do it every two weeks. And I'm going to do some flood watering at the top. I tend to use distilled water, uh, tap water if I don't have that luxury if it's summertime. So it's day 77, there's a little weed there that's not really going anywhere. And the base of this stem is thickening. So as I was mentioning before, the fertilization, uh, maybe it's not necessary at this point. Of course it's not necessary in the absolute sense, but I believe it'll give me a huge boost with plant development. And the leaves are finally starting to come out. They're sort of a yellowish green and they're becoming more more green at this point than they were before, which is good because I'm starting to get worried there because in the past I had many growing attempts for avocado and if the plant's dying then it sort of gets to not even this stage but you'll see the leaves are yellow and then the whole thing just croaks. So you can see some little leaves um, further down on the stem of these main leaves. Um, I don't know what those are about. They never get really that big in my experience. So I'm squirting some fertilizer again. Basically doing the same thing. I'm not watering too much although this setup was designed to 
um, enable basically unlimited watering and if I do unlimited watering and just um, run out of the catch tray holes the large holes that I drilled in the outer trash can so it's day 85 um, the plants a foot tall 30.5 centimeters with yellow green leaves they're getting greener the leaves are starting to grow and things are looking pretty good um, it hasn't been that fast but that's because the weather is cold and this is meant to grow in a more tropical environment such as Mexico in the jungle um, not someplace uh, further north like here in San Diego although there are a lot of avocado trees grown in California as far as I'm aware uh, it's just that they require so much water so I'm just going to use this squirt bottle. Um, I'll tend to try to keep the, the soil and sand mixture down and within this container sort of on the drier side because this is one of those plants that has a very very high oxygen requirement for its root system and if you interfere with that by uh, having the bottom half be totally waterlogged sitting in water that could be a problem although it's really a question of whether the water is oxygenated or not and if you have rotting organic material down there the microbes used in the decomposition will hog up all the oxygen and generate toxic gases and kill off many a plant species so that's why I chose not to use something like potting mix and plus it just attracts unlimited bugs so that's it for the first episode it's pretty condensed Thanks for watching and stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates.